It's a new life for me With every dawn I wake And every song I make Though every beat I'm taking Closer to my maker Don't see no way But there will be no stray With them to be no way But ain't cause we know they Gonna try to deceive us Through their lies and mischievous Compromises and Jesus Just teaching to swamp But it's on A new dawn A new morning A chance for us to just move on To new audience Yeah, I'm an optimist then. Welcome to Occupy TV. Thank you. What is your name? My name, sorry, real quick. Do you want me to look into the camera or look at you? Uh, <laughs> look at me. Okay, okay, cool. You, you, guys, you know, there's a light and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Omar Effendum. I am a Syrian American hip hop artist. Um, born in Saudi Arabia. I was raised in uh, Washington, D.C., and I've been in LA for the past 10 years. Making music, touring, performing, you know, in festivals like these and uh, local hold in the wall clubs and all that stuff. So, yeah, okay. I feel really blessed to be here in Copenhagen right now. Very cool. Do you do you know of the concept red washing? Yes. yes. Well, how do you how you how do you understand it? Well, actually, you just told me what it was. <laughs> uh, but it made perfect sense when you said it, and I may have seen it used in different contexts before. And uh, the idea. As far as I understand it, and hopefully this is correct, uh, is perhaps when uh, a governmental entity that is responsible for so much war and chaos and devastation and bloodshed uh, tries to throw a few chips at some cultural things to make it seem like they're uh, not so bad. Um, and exactly. that's a very you know short kind of way of, of putting it. So it's manipulation um, of public opinion. So it is a manipulation of public opinion. And I'm sure wrapped up in that, perhaps for some of the people who work uh, at these places, there's definitely good intentions and there's definitely people who want to maybe just you know engage in some sort of uh, you know cultural diversity things like that uh, but yeah one should always be aware uh, of the fact that there are you know some bigger things at play um, and you know to be perfectly honest with you before I came here I unfortunately being a traveling artist and, and all that stuff you know you don't necessarily have time to look at every single detail uh, and, and look at the you know the, the chain of things uh, but there's a contradiction there that I think happens on a daily basis. You know, me as an American citizen, for example, uh, I know that my tax dollars of this hard-earned money that I'm using yeah. or that I'm making uh, are financing are, are financing bloodshed in the countries yeah. that I'm actually speaking up against yeah. with the music I use. So there's a very strange a paradox. Right? There's a strange paradox yeah. there, you know, and it's a very real one, and it's something I know a lot of people kind of kind of relate to in many different ways. Uh, not just being a rapper, being, being anything, you know, just working there and knowing you're part of the system. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a it's sort of social hypocrisy that we are force fed. Sure, I mean, it, it, yeah, you really have no you have no choice in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of the way that's kind of the way it is. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's it, I guess I get it. You know, red washing so, is. Occupy is part of this movement that wants to you know do away with this contradiction. You know, because. It's destructive for people, it's destructive for the environment, and we know it. It's yeah. not sustainable. Uh, um, no, I, and it leads to war and war and exploitation and murder. Definitely, and you know, I've, I've been thinking a lot about it in the context, at least of an, uh, as an American artist, um, in the way that the State Department kind of does similar things when they, when they tour and promote artists from the states in different regions of the world, you know, through kind of the State Department circuit. Um, and put on events and host cultural events in these different countries. Again, a lot of people involved in that are very genuine people who really want to see this kind of cultural diversity happen. Yeah. Um, but what are the bigger things that play behind it? Why would they okay something like that and not something else? There's always, you know, that that's something that you should ask yourself. And it's something I always ask myself too. Like when we're watching what's happening today with, you know, the, the beating of the war drum with Syria. I, people, it's, and it make, you know, I mean, it's very obvious where I stand as far as the Assad regime. I've been very vocal about the Assad regime and I'm very much vehemently against them. But, you know, that that's rooted in, in, in the understanding that nonviolent resistance was how this began. And it devolving into this proxy war is not what the intentions of the activists. So you, was. you believe it's a proxy war? That, uh, there's no, that it was a staged attack, it's a false flag attack? Hold on. Uh, which which one? Oh, the poison yeah, gas. Yeah. Look, no, I'm not. I'm not going to say I know the answer to that question because honestly, the Assad regime has done way worse than that. I I I, I believe here, here they're here. one of the one of the most evil, corrupt regimes in the world. And no matter how much Assad. yes, yeah. and no matter how much we try, as evil. as no matter no matter how much 
the liberal and leftist quote unquote movements of the world try right now to side themselves and align themselves against the imperialism of America, which I completely understand, you should not allow yourself to redwash or whitewash, however you want to call it, what the Assad regime has done and continues to do to people every day. So there has to be a line drawn there. And I get passionate about that because as a Syrian, I understand also that long after all the other countries leave, and don't care anymore and get what yeah, they want yeah. out of Syria, it's the Syrian people who have to stay behind yeah. and deal and pick up the pieces. Yeah. So that's where I try to focus my energy. Beneath all the political posturing, all the proxy war language, all the conspiracy theories, there's very real human suffering. Uh -huh. And I don't think that anybody's really paying enough attention to that, especially, unfortunately, uh, the people who are so caught up in the pontification of what, what you know the intentions are behind certain events. If, the, if chemical weapons was truly a red line, we, ha we, we have, have to be sincere Denmark. about that, you know, because America, for example, has used chemical weapons in Iraq. You go to Fallujah today and you see babies born with one eye and no, yeah. no legs. Yeah. So the world knows that, and especially the Arab world. The Arab world doesn't have the short attention span and short uh, memory that, unfortunately, a lot of Americans have. Uh, and I say that as an American. I understand it. Very clearly, I see it. It's very stressful. Uh, it's very stressful. Short-term memory, acting like, you know, yeah. we didn't just go and do this. And now Bombardment of information. So it happens, and uh, and people in the Middle East know. Of course, they're wary. And in fact, you know, I just read a post the other day uh, from someone who's uh, a photographer, a journalist who's embedded with a certain FSA battalions in, in Aleppo, and he's going around with them and, and, and photographing and documenting their work. And he said, speaking to the guys today, I asked them, you know, who was what they felt about U.S. intervention, and. He said 50% of them said no way, and the other 50% said uh, we, we don't like the idea, we're not comfortable with yeah. it, you know, and we want Syrians to be able to solve this problem ourselves. I completely understand the rationale that you want Syrians to solve it themselves. Um, it's just also a very difficult statement knowing how much this regime has, is willing to do, has already done, and will continue to do to anybody who tries to get in its way. And so, and also when it when we talk about foreign intervention, I don't think it's been a very sincere conversation because there's already been foreign intervention yeah. in many different ways, by many different sides yeah. of this conflict. And so it would be very silly to act like right now what's happening is... How would you like the international community to act? With regards to the situation, Man, first and foremost, Syria. first and foremost, there is not nearly enough being done in terms of humanitarian aid. Uh -huh. There are millions of displaced people, both inside Syria, outside Syria, who need our help. The fourth largest city in Jordan right now is a refugee camp that was started two years ago. Uh, you have a million children refugees. You have some incredible cases of trauma uh, that people are dealing with, and you know, there's just so much that needs to be done in terms of beginning uh, the, the healing process humanitarian aid. and humanitarian aid. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, not destroying their infrastructure with cruiser missiles, right? <laughs> Definitely and not drove. destroying. I, look, I mean, I'm a nonviolent artist and activist and, and humanitarian, and, I, and I, I can't support war, even if it's against the most evil dictator that I could possibly think of. And so I think that says something, you know, and I know it's very difficult for a lot of Syrians to hear it. I know people who know me and who support my work, who are very much looking forward to the Assad regime coming, or sorry, being toppled by an outside entity and believe that it's the only way and I understand that. I understand. There's, it's hard to fathom this regime going away without somebody taking out, taking them out. Their allies is the key. You know, I mean, everybody knows who the biggest ally to the United States is so in, how, in the Middle East. How can anybody so, wage war on such a speculative ground? I mean, well, I mean, what, what do you think I, about think, that? I think, I think. For me, again, this is very frustrating because for most activists, when it comes to Syria, we've been, you know losing our voices trying to highlight just how devastating this regime has been. All the destruction for the past two and a half years, 100,000 people dead. Is this really the red line? What is it that's really, really the reason that things are moving now? What, it, what decisions have been made? What things are they finally thinking about that make them want to do this now? When 100,000 people died a while ago. And, you know, is, is, again, is that really the red line? So, you know, I... I so we're talking about humanitarian aid. If, if Denmark is going to use its money in a prudent, wise way, it's humanitarian aid, not yeah, and war. That, and that, that comes in many different forms, uh, and that comes... And look, and I say this also knowing, again, going, going, going to Damascus, visiting my family there, going to the old city of Damascus, seeing what the Danish Cultural Institute has done in terms of supporting uh, the local architects and craftsmen, that's a beautiful thing. And that's, that's, a, that's a really, uh, you know, in un Damascus. honorable... In Damascus. Yeah. And that's an honorable way to spend your money, you know. And I and I'm very much supportive of that. Uh, and and I, I, I wish that our regime, the Syrian regime, cared enough to want to take care of the houses the way that the Danish Cultural Institute was taking care of these beautiful old Arabic houses. It means a lot to me because I've studied architecture, and that particular part of the world is uh, has very rich heritage when it comes to that. Uh -huh. um, 
So that's one small way that you know Denmark is able, has been able to contribute positively to Syria over the last several decades. There might have been others. But right now, the Syrian people are in dire need of help. You talk to anybody in any refugee camp and they'll tell you, not just that they want to go back home, but that the situation is dire and that the, the, they never expected themselves to be in this. You know, the, the, Many of them were actually middle class, wealthy, whatever you have it, and ended up uh, completely out of their savings. And so it's it's and not that, that that's their situation is any better or worse than somebody else's, but it's just not what people think. It's a lot worse than people think. Uh, and it's affected so many different levels of the society, so many different religious sects, so many different people, but especially the children and the women. Uh, the amount of uh, you know men caretakers of families that have been killed from both sides in Syria is devastating, especially by the Assad regime killing people who they know will be the breadwinners of these families, creating a generation of orphans. I mean, so we need you know psychiatric help and trauma. Uh, we need obviously the food and, and the clothing and Not the blankets. Not drones and bombs and, and, and missiles. And, 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 and there's no way that more guns and bombs is going to really help the situation. It's already so volatile. That said. I don't judge anybody in Syria going through what they're going through calling for an intervention. Yeah. I don't judge the people of Syria for doing that because I have family members who've called for it from day one. Yeah. They were being bombed on. I have a second cousin, 12-year-old boy, was shot in the head and killed by a sniper from the Assad regime. So I don't blame somebody who's been through that to yeah. want to call for that. Of course not. But they've been calling for it for two and a half years. Yeah. What is it right now? Yeah. You know. So again, I'm not, I'm not blind to that either. But I also caution people uh, who, uh, again, have this tendency right now to want to, you know, just stand against this notion of U.S. imperialism. I caution them uh, with giving too much credence and credibility to the Assad regime. Okay. I've seen that happen in activist circles and leftist circles, and it is flat out wrong. You're going to side with another evil, evil side if you think that you know it's this binary. It's not a binary. The Syrian people are not black and white. It's there's a shades of gray when it comes to political thought, when it comes to what they'd like for the world, you know? And so to expect everybody to either be for or against and to grill people and force them to pick a side, that's not helpful. That's not helpful to Syrians. Syrian people shouldn't do that to each other. And we definitely shouldn't be thinking like that when it comes to the future we want to establish, you know? So, and again, all of this has to be taken with a grain of salt because I live in America and I've planted roots in America and I'm going to be there. So yes, I want the best for my home country and my family, my immediate family moved back to Syria. So it means a lot to me. But at the end of the day, if you want to know what people in Syria want, get online and look it up because there is so much stuff online. Local coordination committees, nonviolent resistance groups are posting things every single day. Is it hundreds in, of in thousands Ara of videos Arabic or? in Arabic? Many of it has been a lot of it has been translated. A lot of it you don't even need to be able to uh, you know speak Arabic to see just how bad it can get. And to think about creative ways to give it back. I don't I don't have all the answers obviously, but I've seen some really cool examples of how people have 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 given back. I'll give two real quick. There's a uh, Adopt a Revolution, it's a, a group in uh, Germany and, in, and now in, I believe in, in, in Holland uh, who I've been working with who've decided to not only just support humanitarian aid, they want to actually deliver uh, the money to the nonviolent activists and, and to, to help them with the work that they're doing. And so they've touched base with the different coordination committees in, in Syria uh, and they've been able to target exactly what type of assistance people would need, whether it's buying them SIM cards for their phones or helping them uh, you know, with some online kind of training. And that right there is it's, it's a solidarity and a national solidarity that the internet allows for that we can kind of you know embrace. Um, and another really interesting example, a couple of young kids and Syrian American kids in the U.S. Um, decided to do something fun. They put up a website where they said, they all grown mustaches, four of them, and they said, how much will you give us to shave our mustache? We're going to donate all the money to Syrian orphans. So a bunch of people started to donate and they shaved the mustaches. They said, okay, well, well, what if we shave our heads? And then they shaved their heads and raised even more. What if we shave our legs? It went kind crazy. Crowd, crowdfunding. And, uh, and crowdfunded, I think, over $20,000 uh, to Amazing. give back to Syrian orphans. How beautiful is that? And people in Syria were saying thank you and, and laughed along with it. And there's, you know, a lot of uh, aid organizations that go to either to Syria or the neighboring areas that you can connect with in your local cities and try to find out different ways of helping out. Um, the kids, man, that's all I can say, though, really. There's millions of children that need our help and getting just care packages together for them, pencils, uh, crayons. I mean, you can't imagine just the little things. That's what people need, you know, to live and to survive. And also, I just wanted to say, I mean, I've been on a rant here. You caught me after a show, so you're lucky. <laughs> But I wanted to say that I think um, generally the perception 
around the world because of the way that the media has shaped, uh, you know, people's views and thoughts. The perception is that, you know, the people in the Arab world are always fighting, you know. Uh, and I just wanted to make it clear that from my experience, from my family and from my friends and the people I know, people are not fighting for the sake of fighting. People are fighting because they want to live and be able to live freely and love and, and, and ex experience all these things that we take for granted here, you know? Just the simple fact that I can stand with you on this corner here with a camera in your hand. We probably get shot in Syria right now if somebody saw us doing this, just because it looks suspicious, you know? So that's just what I want people to think about, you know? Don't take the things that you have for granted. And, you know, like this conversation began to understand the bigger picture. You might not always be able to do something about it directly, but if you're aware of it, that'll get us one step closer to making the changes that we need to make, I think. Anyway, yeah, man, thank you. Word, humanitarian aid to Syria. Yes. Yeah, there's definitely not enough of it, and we need to be doing more. And please, long after this is gone, because we probably don't have it in our hands to stop this war while it, when it keeps going, and the, the one with the bigger guns wins, just remember, long after it's not in the news, the people who are suffering today will still be suffering and will still need our help. This is the kind of problem that's going to take decades to resolve. You're talking about generational trauma, the violence that people have had to go through, the children. Uh, so don't just think about Syria today because it's in the news. If you really care as a human being, and you should, think about it for the long term. 100,000, uh, sorry, 800,000 people died in Rwanda before anybody even batted an eye, you know? So we have to be aware of what's happening in this world and think about ways that we can give back, not take things for granted, and try to stay positive through it all. Thank you, Omar. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Peace. Yo. Optimistic. I ain't gon' compliment them Corrupt and kleptocratic addicts of apocalyptic The figure I hate, it fits them Belligerent traits addict them The bigger the stakes, the bigger the chase The bigger the make to get them I see the traps, you phonies I need the straps, as cronies I'm fending them off with the pen to fend the raps, homie Political hacks to get in the record Split up the map, Tony Sinister minutes to prime Then if a rhythm is finishing cash only The lonely heart of feel me If only God would heal me The pain of yesterday could pave the way for dawn to deal me I better hand when a man better win Can't handle a to no win It's better for him to throw in The towel just to keep it humble So I could be disgruntled Watching my cousins rob by the dozen Bob's your uncle No sense in crime Direct your energies to rectify If destiny's a lexicon Fate it seems I'm testifying With every dawn I wake And every song I make Through every beat I'm taking Closer to my maker Don't see no way I'll ever be no stray with them to be no ever ain't cause we know they gonna try to deceive us through their lies and mischief as compromises and Jesus is teaching to strong but it's some a new dawn a new morning a chance for us to just move on sure. So I'm an immigrant, what? I'm still American, what? The pilgrimage of Puritans don't get compared to my up. Bring in the fairness, I must be well aware of the cusp. The interference I cut, seeing the perils of lust. Being the parent is tough. My mother birds had enough. The mistress purses were stuck. Big brother's words were a bluff. But you gon' need a food and I want us to share, but uh, uh Put your feet in my shoes and I know how to bear, but I uh, Hypocrisy's apparent, that's why I can see the fair and eyes of people over there. And swearing war was over there when it's really here. I'm really rare. Like bloody stakes, they called high. Nobody's there. I guess it's safe to say that racist prayer stays this way so they can take what's in the safe. Keep us at bay where they can case. But I'ma make a case for patience. And God in the sake, sleep and raise my face up in the morning. Find that I'm awake, sleep. With every dawn I wake and every song I make. Through every beat I'm taking closer to my maker. Don't see no way. Peace for Americans, but peace for all men and women. Not merely peace in our time, but peace in all time. It's a new life.
from me. Yeah, it's a new dawn, it's a new day.